One of my all-time personal heroes is Professor Richard Feynman. I just think he was an outstanding, extraordinary man. Richard Feynman was born in New York City in May 1918. He developed some of the greatest physics theories of the 20th century. And in 1965, Feynman was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. Many people argue that he is as important as Einstein in the development of the science. Feynman was also passionate about teaching physics. Throughout his career, he turned down jobs at many prestigious universities because they didn't offer the opportunity to regularly teach students. His lectures had a reputation for being entertaining as well as educational. And he was known for being a talented musician and artist, as well as having one of the greatest minds of the last hundred years. When he was um, on a sabbatical working at a university in South America, he went off and joined a samba band. He was a skilled artist and um, he learned how to break into safes because I think he was a little bored at one time, but he was just fascinated by how things work and why they work, which is what made him um, such a great person and such a great teacher. Feynman died on February 15th, 1988, at the age of 69. It is reported that his last words were, I'd hate to die twice. It's so boring. I found Richard Feynman inspirational uh, for many reasons. He was a truly great physicist. He was an inspirational teacher and probably one of the best teachers of physics that we will ever see. But above all of that, there was his childish enthusiasm for everything he came into contact with. We still have access to Richard Feynman and I would recommend anybody just to go onto the internet and put in Richard Feynman and you can see videos of his lectures with people and just sit and listen and watch the man. He has, even in his later life, such enthusiasm for his subject when you watch him on the screen. My personal hero is a uh, comedian and actress and producer and writer, Tina Fey. Tina Fey started performing comedy in the early 1990s in Chicago. She joined the American comedy sketch show Saturday Night Live as a writer in 1997. She says that she had dreamed about this job as a child. She became the program's first female head writer in 1999 and started acting on screen in 2000. Faye has written, produced and starred in a number of films. She created her own television sitcom called 30 Rock and she has won countless awards for acting and writing. She is now considered to be one of the most powerful women in the US entertainment industry. I remember growing up thinking most of the comedians that I saw on television or in films were all male. Tina Fey has changed things so that now films like Bridesmaids can come out and women are funny and in the same way that men are funny. And it, I feel like that reflects the reality of life because women are funny. There are a lot of very, very funny women who are quirky and, and witty and, and I feel like now television and films are actually finally catching up. Tina Fey has often spoken about being a woman in the male-dominated comedy world. While she has said that men and women sometimes prefer different jokes, she believes that most of the time, funny is simply funny. She's, uh, she's smart and she's one of those people that is not afraid to say what she means and to take control and she's not afraid to step on people's toes because I think she realizes that strong women need to be there to get things done.
Someone I really admire is Aung San Suu Kyi, the Burmese political protester. Aung San Suu Kyi was born in Rangoon in 1945. Her father, a Burmese independence hero, was assassinated when she was just two years old. She left Burma when she was 15. But after studying and living around the world for many years, she returned home in 1988. She said that as her father's daughter, she could not remain indifferent to all that was going on in her country, which was being run by a military regime. She was first arrested for her political activities in 1990 and she spent much of the next 20 years either in prison or under house arrest in Rangoon. In 1991, Aung San Suu Kyi was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. As she was unable to leave Burma, her British husband Michael and her sons Alexander and Kim collected the award for her. Aung San Suu Kyi has insisted that even when she was in prison, she was always free, because the people holding her were not able to touch the things that mattered, her mind, her principles and what she believed in. Over the years, Aung San Suu Kyi became one of the most recognisable and high-profile political prisoners, and people around the world continued to campaign for her release, which finally happened in November 2010. She's someone that I admire a lot because of her strong belief in the power of peaceful protest. She could have left the country at several times and returned to England to be with her husband and her children. But she decided to stay in Burma because she didn't think that she would be allowed back into the country. So she chose imprisonment or house arrest because of the things that she believed in. And I find that quite incredible and quite inspiring. <laughs> 